Okay, so I've set the battlefield for this particular uh, battle and as you can see this army is uh, a bit more dangerous than the last army. Uh, they have much higher initiative than the other army had so they will be attacking uh, first with their entire force before uh, half of my army has gotten the chance of attacking. And since they are uh, they consist of five units. They would actually get to draw five battle plans, but because of Parminion, uh, they only get to draw uh, two battle plans, which is it, it can be uh, quite deadly still. And um, I'm sort of thinking of upgrading my Alexander or giving him another level of uh, glorification. And I could do that by completing this uh, Pray to the Winds uh, prophecy, which means that I would have to discard uh, five gold. But let's actually draw the... Uh, you, you can do that whenever you want. So this is not timed or you don't have to do it during a specific uh, part of a turn. You, can, you could do that in the middle of battle. That's how I uh, read the rules anyway. That's how I play it. Uh, so let's draw the enemy battle plans and then plan for our own battle plans and see how uh, how much extra gold we would have to spend because remember last time we got to draw uh, three extra because of the King Philip II here, Alexander's father uh, but this time we are on our own uh, so we only get to draw one battle plan uh, on the other hand if I level up Alexander now if we look at the other side of his uh, level 1 token, he would have a battle value of 2, which would mean that we would get 2 free uh, battle plans. That might actually be worth it, because then we would only probably only have to buy a couple of extra battle plans uh, for this specific battle. I don't really know if I want to do that, though. That will leave me with... Uh, first, it will leave me with 6 gold from uh, the prophecy itself, and then probably uh, I have to spend 1 or 2 gold for the battle plans. And I would probably consider spending even more, uh, just so that I am certain of winning this battle. Uh, this, If we do win this battle, we get to choose uh, if we want to govern or raise this uh, pivotal area so that would give us an additional 12 gold which would allow us to move further along. The problem is if Memnon's army destroys one of our units um, that would be pretty bad because then we would have a higher chance of uh, rolling uh, higher than our army for the scouting roll which would mean that we have to inflict hits on our army to move and we would have to stop in our tracks and rebuild the army. But, hmm, well, this is a risky decision. I think it's worth it, so I will be taking a chance here, and I will uh, glorify Alexander and level him up, which will cost me 5 gold. So I go from 11 to, uh, let's see here, where is the 5 counter, here we go. I will go from 11 to 6 gold and I will complete the Pray to the Winds prophecy and I will just discard it over here. Uh, so that means that our Alexander now ha has uh, a level of 2. And then we get to draw enemy battle plans. Remember we get to draw 2 battle plans here. So I will look away while doing this. And this is the first battle plan. That's Rally. Stop one hit. It's not that bad, but not the greatest one either. Then, second one is Guards. Stop one hit against the leader. And that's not that great. I would rather they get something else beside that, but okay. Uh, so they can actually stop two hits to their army. That's pretty helpful. Um, so, we have to devise a strategy here, and hmm, of the battle plans that we have uh, available to us, I think I will 
uh, I will again choose Rally as the first one. Um, I think Flank is going to be worth it again. So those are our two free battle plans and now we have to spend gold to actually uh, be able to be able to buy extra battle plans and I think the lead for Alexander is definitely going to be worth it so that's one gold hmm now, this is the question Alexander now with the lead battle plan has a battle value of three with a superscript of one so um, he could kill Memnon pretty fast if we are a bit lucky hmm but I don't actually think that that is a very safe strategy because if we do this and we fail that's not gonna be great um, I don't think we can actually I don't think we can actually survive if we lose this battle so <laughs> I have to do everything to be able to win uh, here so I will actually buy the charge as well um, put that there and now how many of these do I want to buy because I think we need extra so right now we have to spend two gold and I think I will get an additional flank and actually an additional charge so I will have to spend four gold here we have six gold so I will have to spend four and go down to two gold in our resupply treasury area okay so now I think we are ready to battle Memnon the Persian commander hopefully this will go well uh, let's see let's start off with the highest initiative troops here which are uh, the two archers from the different sides and we roll one for each remember the green ones are the Persians and the uh, white die is my own army and the archers hit on a two or less and of course the enemy Archer hits and our archer completely misses. Okay, so that's that's pretty bad. I don't think I want to allocate this hit. So actually, I think I'm gonna use my rally and stop this immediately. This is pretty bad. I think this might have been a mistake, but okay, we move on. Uh, we get to the next uh, tier which is the light cavalry with the uh, initiative of four so the enemy light cavalry rolls and it hits on a two or less as well and that's a three so thankfully that's actually a miss and we get to exhaust the enemy cavalry it cannot attack next turn so that's great and then we get to the really interesting part which is our heavy cavalry against each other my heavy cavalry is a special heavy cavalry and it attacks on it hits on a four or less but the enemy heavy cavalry hits on a three or less they also inflict two hits if they uh, hit so let's see green enemy white mine come on heavy cavalry well both hit and that's pretty bad but okay could be worse could be a lot worse um, yeah this will ex exhaust their heavy cavalry so they don't get to attack next turn normally the heavy cavalry would be the best target for these hits but I actually think that I want to kill their infantry and hopefully, hopefully my phalanx can inflict some wounds to kill their heavy cavalry. But that might also be quite dangerous. Hmm. I don't know. I have to think about this. Okay, so I think I've 
figure something out here. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this is the correct decision, but um, I did forget that I do have the flank, uh, the flank battle plan, and I actually bought two of these and two of the charge battle plans. I should have marked this with some dice, but okay, we we can remember that I have two of flank and two of charge. Uh, so I will use one of these flank and I will actually score one additional hit. You can only use one flank per uh, round, so you, you, can't, uh, you can't buy five of these and then do six hits with one successful die roll. Uh, but I will deal three hits and I will kill their heavy cavalry. Uh, put that up here with the other troops that have died this turn and I will kill their archers as well They remember the archers only can only take one hit so once they have been wounded they are dead so this is my three hits and now unfortunately uh, we have to allocate two hits on my troops as well since their heavy cavalry also hit so I will actually wound my heavy cavalry with one of these hits and it would move down uh, one step since it gets initiative of two and it now attacks on a three uh, a three or less and for the last hit hmm I think for the last hit I'm going to kill off my archer my own archer uh, when you when your troops die they just move back to the resupply area uh, unless you have the regroup uh, battle plan then you can put them to the side and or you can use the regroup battle plan immediately and then put them to the side so that you can uh, re-add them to the battlefield maybe this would have been smart to have actually I didn't think of that but okay let's move on uh, so now this uh, tier will attack but my heavy cavalry has already attacked it should actually be exhausted since I haven't well I, I can I can use one of these battle plans right now and uh, ready it again but it, it still cannot attack it has already attacked this turn oh wait I did oh my god I forgot the enemy rally uh, ability as well so uh, Actually, the enemy archers will survive since they will stop one hit. They would probably stop a hit on the heavy cavalry, but since I did three hits, it doesn't matter. The heavy cavalry will die. So now they will use their uh, their battle plan. And it goes back into the cup. Okay, so this is a bit worse than I thought, but okay, let's let's move on. Uh, now these two guys attack their infantry and their leader. So let's roll for that, and they both attack on a 2 or less, so we can roll simultaneously here. Let's hope for 2 uh, or 3 plus here. And that's a 1 and a 3, so they do get to score one additional hit. And now this is pretty bad. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Uh, the phalanx is actually... It's a really bad idea to wound the phalanx because they move down to um, initiative of zero and then they can only hit on a two or less. So I think the better choice here is to leave the phalanx at full strength and actually kill off my infantry. Sad as it is, um, I don't really want to do that, but okay, uh, let's do it. Let's kill off the infantry here put it here with the archer and okay and we move on we get to our phalanx and let's hope now that this guy can actually get something done so we will roll for the phalanx here it hits only four or less and that's a five so that's a complete miss that's that's pretty terrible but okay uh, we then move on to Alexander and he hits on a uh, three or less and has a superscript of one so if we roll a one we can deal two damage So let's hope for the best here then we need a three or less That's a five again, so that's complete miss Alexander misses and we 
Hmm. We either get to retreat or move on. Okay. I think yeah, let's let's move on. Uh, so now we get to the second round of this combat and their archers attack again and they hit on a two or less. Let's hope for the best here. Uh, basically my plan is to have Alexander kill Memnon, but okay, let's see what happens. And that's a four, so their archer misses. Their light cavalry is spent, it cannot attack, but we can ready it for the next turn. And then this tier gets to attack. So let's roll for the enemy first. The enemy leader Memnon and the infantry attack. They hit on a two or less. And that's a five and a five, so those uh, completely miss. And now let's hope for the best here. Uh, we readied our cavalry with one of our charge uh, battle plans, so now it can attack and it hits on a three or less. Let's hope for a hit here. And that's a two, that's perfect. Those are two hits and we will use our last flank uh, battle plan here to deal one additional hit, which, which means three hits. Um, so now we can kill off the enemy light cavalry and the enemy archer. Uh, like so. And now it looks much, much better uh, on the battlefield here. Uh, our heavy cavalry is spent and I will yeah I will ready it for the last charge counter here as well uh, so we can attack with it next turn okay so then we get to our phalanx which hits on a roll of four or less and that's a five again the phalanx misses this, this is pretty I mean this is pretty sad actually the phalanx is the backbone of every Greek army and if you are lucky with a phalanx, they can do tremendous damage to the enemy forces. But the last three playthroughs of this map in particular, my phalanxes have been miserable. They, they have been completely and utterly miserable. Um, and that's quite sad because you really want to see the phalanxes do well since they are uh, the backbone of the Greek armies, like I said. But okay, let's move on. Alexander gets the attack. He attacks on a uh, three or less. And that's a one. That's perfect because he has a superscript of one, which means Alexander can deal two damage. And this is interesting. We could end this battle right here. Alexander could kill the infantry unit and this would be, uh, this battle will be over uh, immediately. Or we can assign those two hits to uh, Memnon. They can stop one of them, but we would still wound him. And then, if we are lucky and are, um, maybe that was the reason for not uh, readying the heavy cavalry uh, with our charge battle plan. Because then we could skip attacking with the heavy cavalry and hope that the phalanx doesn't kill the infantry so that. Alexander can kill Memnon and we would gain additional glory, but uh, okay, that's not going to happen. And I think instead of risking, uh, instead of risking my units getting damaged further, I will just choose to, yeah, I will choose to kill the infantry unit here, uh, ending the battle since Memnon is left alone on the battlefield and he has to flee uh, but we still do get gold for him later on when we resolve uh, the resupply step up there okay so we were successful we can clean up here successful in our battle uh, for Granicus and we have uh, conquered this pivotal area and now we get to decide if we want to um, raise or govern and I think well I don't really know I need to resupply my army so I, I would be I think I will need probably six or eight gold to do that and then we would probably need a couple of more golds to go down here so we could do that with mm, 
we could do that with the 14 gold, which we would have if we choose to raise Granicus. But if we want to be safe, oh well, actually we would gain gold for these guys as well, since we will be ending the turn here. And yeah, let's let's do it. Let's raise this area. I don't have. Um, I will not be taking that many turns uh, to finish this campaign. I hope so. I will raise Granicus, gaining fourteen gold or, or twelve gold immediately, putting me up to fourteen, since we already had uh, two here. So okay. And well, we could do our scouting roll to see what happens. Uh, now we have three units in our army, so let's see what happens here. Let's do a scouting roll. If we get a free move, I might actually consider moving into Sardis uh, and attacking the enemy stronghold. So let's see here. That's a four so we would need to inflict one hit on our army to be able to move and I don't think we can do that so I will choose to stay in Granicus and end my turn so then the conquest step is complete we get to resupply we gain gold uh, you would gain five gold for each uh, governed city but since we have raised the both areas that we could have governed we don't get any gold from that, but we do get, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four from the Greek army up there. And then we get one, two, three, four, five. So we gain nine gold for the destroyed enemy troops, which would bring our supply of gold um, up to 23. So let's do that. Go up to 20, there we go, 23, and uh, something that I should have done immediately after the battle ended, uh, I gained two glory for successfully winning a battle. Okay, so now we have 23 gold and four glory, and we can spend those in the resupply step, and we can do that over and over again, uh, however we want. I think the first order of business will be to uh, bolster our forces since three units is uh, not enough to uh, conquer the remaining strongholds. So from the available troops, uh, which we can see here, I think I will buy, I will buy a phalanx for four. Uh, the troops cost their battle value. These are Alexander tokens so you cannot recruit them uh, but the other you can recruit. So they cost uh, as much as they have in their battle value. Uh, I will buy one I think yeah I will buy one of these catapults. I could actually buy two of them. That might not be such a bad idea. They only cost they only cost one so that would actually be that's pretty smart, I think. I will buy two catapults and I will explain what these do when we come to uh, an enemy stronghold and why they are important. So that would cost us six gold. The question is, do we need another unit? Uh, we will be refitting our companion heavy cavalry uh, at the start of the next turn, but do we need another unit and that might actually be smart idea we could get another heavy cavalry and that would cost us nine gold altogether leaving us with uh, 14 gold and i think that's enough to actually move into sardis and keep on uh, going so i will buy another heavy cavalry here uh, the problem now you might ask yourself why don't i just buy uh, more uh, troops as well uh, the problem there is with the scouting roll, if you roll uh, a 1, for instance if I buy these and I roll a 1, I would have to pay 6 gold to be able to move. And the more troops you have, the dangerous it gets. Uh, right now we are immune to 
uh, we are immune to gain, gaining hits or getting hit uh, with our scouting role but that basically means that we would have to pay gold each time we want to move um, so it might be well the, the, the thing is uh, the best option for attacking Sardis is probably just buying these three guys so we have six uh, troops and we have a chance of rolling a six and be able to move uh, for free uh, into Sardis and if we do roll below six it will not cost us as much but the problem there is if these troops in Sardis even though they are weak if they manage to kill uh, some of our troops we probably would have to stop and refit and uh, recruit some new troops on our way to Alicarnassus and Lycia down here uh, so you have to kind of weigh the away the dif different options that you have because my thinking is if I buy these four troops here uh, that I will be able to conquer all three strongholds with these troops uh, in my army um, and I think that's a smart idea I think I will be doing this so that's uh, four five six nine I have to pay nine gold I'll fix this later on uh, so I will pay 9 gold here, bringing me down to 14. So here we go, now we have 14 golds. And I will spend uh, 3 glory uh, drawing an insight. So that brings us down to 1 glory uh, from 4. And I get to draw 1 insight here. Uh, turn them around a bit. I shuffle these beforehand so this is our insight let's see what it is it says enemy does not draw battle plans now that's not really helpful since we have parminion so okay a bit wasted but whatever um, yeah I think that was a bit wasted but okay let's move on so that is our turn and I will come back with the next turn shortly okay so we are back with another turn of field commander Alexander and this would be our second turn we did manage to get quite a lot of things done in just one turn we conquered two different pivotal areas and we moved four spaces on the map so that's that's pretty good we also completed one uh, prophecy glorifying Alexander to level 2 which is also quite good um, and um, I initially thought that this um, this insight we bought wasn't all that helpful but uh, we do have this other prophecy that we could complete and uh, that means that we don't uh, we, we have to complete a turn without using advisors and that would mean that we cannot use Parminion uh, we could use this insight to mimic Parminion's uh, ability for one of the battles so I'm thinking of actually using this on the Sardis and then if we are unlucky with the rolls with the scouting rolls here maybe we have to stop in one of these areas uh, since it would probably cost us too much gold to move on um, we would get to complete this uh, second prophecy glorifying Alexander to level 3 but since there are no other leaders on the board right now, this isn't, it's not all that important. So we will see what happens uh, uh, in the coming parts uh, of the uh, future turns. Uh, first, we have to uh, move back up here to sequence of play and start with uh, preparation which means advancing the turn token one step so we are now at the second turn and so far we have not lost any uh, we have not lost any victory points uh, we would still get the maximum of 25 victory points uh, if we would to win the game or complete the map objective at this second turn so we have advanced the turn counter and we then get to refit and we will do this of course 
uh, we have a heavy cavalry unit which is damaged and I've ordered my troops into formation here so I know which order they will be attacking uh, the ballistas or siege engines have a uh, initiative value of 6 so they always get to attack first which is great for walls which we will see in the upcoming battles but I will choose to refit my uh, heavy cavalry moving it back to initiative value of 3 and uh, healing its wound uh, so that it can attack at full strength and that would cost me two uh, two gold for each unit that I, that I refit uh, bringing me down to 12 gold from 14 here uh, the destroyed enemy forces are cleared from here now since we have gained gold for those already so now this is a completely new uh, turn we are taking so now we have to roll for enemy orders and this is the this is sort of the important uh, part of this turn. The enemy orders and the enemy operations. This could either go well or we can uh, really make this harder for ourselves depending on what we roll here. Well, let's see, we begin by rolling for Sardis and we are now just one space from Sardis. So we just add one to our roll. So let's see, that's a two plus one is Three, so that means that Sardis, Sardis gets one additional wall and that's pretty bad actually uh, so now Sardis has two walls uh, just briefly to explain what walls do um, they are considered forces so they will draw enemy battle plans at the beginning of the battle and they also give attacking forces minus two on attack um, and that's pretty bad. These, if there are several walls on in one place, you combine them. So these will gi would give minus four uh, to my troops, which would mean that none of my troops could attack. Uh, that's why uh, these siege engines are really important. These regular troops could not attack, but the siege engines get plus two against walls, so they are basically unaffected. Um, by uh, by wall attacks okay so uh, they get plus two on their battle value so they have a battle value of three and they are also unaffected by the walls here so they will uh, even though there could be five walls here they will still uh, have a battle value of three uh, and that's the basically the only way to deal with multiple walls since none of my uh, troops could attack through walls. If there was only one wall here uh, I could actually attack through that wall. Um, both my phalanxes and my heavy cavalry could attack through just one wall. That's why these troops are kind of important to have since you can attack through walls with them. But okay, the enemy gets one extra wall at Sardis and then we move to Halicarnassus down here and we roll for them. That's a four, five, six, seven. And a seven is one extra gar garrison. That's pretty bad, that's one extra troop. I will draw this at random and that's... Oh wait, that's a ship. Shouldn't have been in there. Okay, so here we go. That's a Peltas, I think. Yeah, that's a Peltas unit. It's a light infantry unit that have high initiative value but do uh, very little damage. Or they uh, hit on just a 1. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. That's pretty good. And uh, then we do the same for Lycia. Let's hope for the best here as well. That's a 4 again. So that's 1, 2... 3 plus 4 is 7, so the same thing happens in Lycia. They bolster their, their ranks. So let's draw. And again, we draw a Peltas. That's amazing. It's pretty good. Uh, so they do have an additional troop, but the troops are pretty weak. So that, that was a... Let me actually see. I don't remember 
yeah, these also die on one hit. So that's that's great. That's what I thought. They are just like archers. They are pretty weak. Uh, so we are done with the enemy orders and we get to the enemy operation step which is this here and if we are unlucky here we would get to deploy two extra units to Halicarnassus. So let's hope for the best here. Uh, oh my god. Oh, that, that was the go but which one was the top one? Was it this one or the go? Hmm. Okay. Let's do this randomly since I was clumsy and I knocked the stack over. Uh, there was a go uh, token there and another token which I have not seen yet. So what I will do now is I will roll and see uh, which one of these we will use. So one, two, three is go and four to six is the hidden operation token. So let's hope for the best here. Ah, that's a two, so we get to go. Perfect. That was lovely. Because of my clumsiness. Probably the go was not the top one, but okay. We get to deploy the two uh, reserve units there. And now we have to reshuffle the stack again. So I will do I will do that and then I will come back.